Notre Dame is number one. Notre Dame with a miracle win is a He's clock going clock. again. Notre Dame has scored. Notre Dame's postseason matchup with top-ranked Colorado brought back a variety of bowl game memories for Fighting Irish fans. Notre Dame would be playing in the Orange Bowl Classic for the first time since a win over top-ranked Alabama in 1975. Continuing another Irish tradition, Notre Dame was poised to take on the number one team in the land in a postseason game for the seventh time since 1969. In fact, the Irish had claimed national championships by virtue of their 24-23 triumph over top-ranked Alabama in the 73 Sugar Bowl and their convincing 38-10 romp over number one Texas in the Cotton Bowl in 1977. All those history-making wins were simply pages in a scrapbook for the 89 Notre Dame team. These Irish were more interested in making history of their own and their mission was to do it amidst a hectic week of palm trees, media appearances, sun and fun. For some teams, bowl games were a pleasant reward at a warm weather site for a season of accomplishment. But there was so much more at stake for Notre Dame in 1989. The Irish Orange Bowl challenge was no different than those they had faced all year long to prove themselves all over again in one more football game against the best that college football could offer. Going into Colorado game, there are three factors that we needed, that we needed to concentrate upon. One was the fact that we still had a chance to win a national championship. We played the toughest schedule throughout the course of the year, and Colorado being number one was the best way for us to prove that we had the best team. Two was the fact that just the seniors didn't want to go out losers, period. Three was the fact that we knew that for the University of Notre Dame, we had to come out and dominate. Coach Oates told us that if this game was important because we needed to reset the Notre Dame standard. And we went out there, and I feel that most of us believe we accomplished that. This time it was unbeaten Colorado that stood in the way of the Irish. And the Buffaloes, in the midst of a storybook season, were on a mission of their own. With everyone else needing an Irish win over Colorado to keep the national championship up for grabs, Lou Holtz's team ironically even earned the cheers of Miami Hurricane fans. But once game time came around, the sun and fun of Miami gave way to some fierce football, especially the defensive sort. Both sides had their first half opportunities in front of a record Orange Bowl crowd, but neither team ended up with much to show for them. Although the Notre Dame defense made its presence felt immediately, Colorado managed to move the football early. But the luck of the Irish was anywhere but with the Buffaloes. The Big 8 champions appeared on the verge of snatching a lead. But with Eric Bieniemy in the clear deep in Irish territory, a leprechaun knocked the ball loose as the Buffalo back was changing hands. On the next series, usually dependable kicker Ken Culbertson pulled a chip shot field goal attempt far to the left after Colorado had reached the Notre Dame five. Colorado's final first half possession showcased a momentum shifting goal line stand, one of the most impressive ones Irish coach Lou Holtz could recall. After the Buffs had rumbled impressively to first and goal at the Irish one, Dewan Francisco single-handedly repelled the enemy on first down. Darian Hagan tried to sneak his way into the end zone to no avail. Then he misfired on a pitch out. On fourth down, the Buffs elected to pass up a chance for three points. Here comes the snap, the spot, the pass by Campbell. Going to run it with Campbell down to the end zone. Stop at the one yard line. The defensive surge seemed to ignite the dormant Irish offense. 
Moving from its own one in the final three minutes of the half, Notre Dame benefited from big gainers by Tony Rice and consensus All-American flanker turned tailback Ragib Ismail. A nifty catch by senior split end Pat Eilers drove the Irish into field goal range. But after three successive timeouts, Colorado rose up to block Billy Hackett's attempt from 27 yards out. That left the teams tied at 0-0 at halftime for the first time in the Orange Bowl since 1938. But the momentum generated by the goal line stand and the late offensive awakening seemed to carry over for Notre Dame after intermission. On third and 11, Rice tossed to sophomore Tony Smith for 27 yards. Then Anthony Johnson added 29 of his own. Two plays later, Johnson put the first points of the evening on the scoreboard as the Irish needed just over three minutes to negotiate the 69 yards. Colorado had suffered only 13 turnovers all season, but the next one it committed proved deadly. On the third play after Notre Dame's touchdown, Ned Bolkar got his fingertips on a Darian Hagen pass that finally ended up back in his hands at the Colorado 46. The Irish quickly dug a hole for themselves as successive penalties made it first and 32 back in the Notre Dame end of the field. Rice found Eilers once for 18 yards. Then on third and 14, Ragib Ismail streaked down the Irish sideline for a 14-0 lead. Ismail's performance earned him the MVP award from NBC Sports and proved especially timely, considering Ricky Waters' role was reduced to that of cheerleader after an injury on the third play of the game. Darian Hagen had some magic of his own up his sleeve as his touchdown scamper kept the Buffaloes in range. But after an exchange of punts, the Irish embarked on a nine-minute drive that both typified Notre Dame's relentless running game and ended whatever hopes remained for a Colorado national championship. The heroes were many for the Irish. Rice guided Notre Dame flawlessly as the Irish controlled the football for nearly 20 of 30 minutes while taking command in the second half. And it was the Notre Dame defense that held a Colorado team that had been averaging 473 yards and 41 points per game to just 282 yards in a single touchdown. Lou Holtz had told his Irish players at intermission that how they reacted in the second half would determine their approach to things the rest of their lives. He wasn't disappointed, and neither were the fans of the Fighting Irish. Once the clock had run out on the 1989 season, the final tally was an impressive one. 12 victories for the second straight season. Wins over champions of the Big Ten, the Big Eight, the Pac-10, and the ACC. 12 straight weeks as the unbeaten number one team. An all-time record win streak of 23 straight games. And an Orange Bowl win over the number one ranked team. One, two, one, two, three. But Notre Dame's football season comprised far more than statistics and records. The Fighting Irish earned the respect of the college football world as they risked their unbeaten record and number one ranking week after week in emotional confrontations against the most talented teams in the nation.